Have you ever thought that what you wear affects how you think and your performance when studying? I highly doubt it. Mostly we're taught to wear something that is comfortable and maybe to wear a lucky pair of underwear for the exam. But it turns out that there is evidence that highlights that wearing certain clothes can boost our focus and test scores and you can literally dress for success. In this video, we'll talk about some of the studies in psychology which have looked at the impact of dress choice on our performance. I'll be introducing a concept called enclosed cognition and I'll also share how I leverage these ideas to practically boost my study for my recent set of exams. Let's get into it, but for those who don't know me, hi, my name is Rohan. I'm a fourth year medical student studying at Cambridge University. Okay, so the story starts in the height of the COVID lockdown, where we were all working from home. And in general, we were happy that we didn't have to get dressed before going to lectures. I thought this was a great idea and I started wearing tracksuit bottoms and nice soft tops when watching lectures. But I soon found that when I wore this, I was almost too comfortable and I ended up just feeling more tired and wanting to just go lie in bed. For a long time, I never linked A to B and I never considered that what I wore was affecting my ability to focus. It was only really after following productivity YouTubers like Captain Sinbad and trying wearing different stuff that I realized that dress choice can affect your studying. This is where I want to highlight an intriguing study in the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology, where they introduced a concept called enclosed cognition. Basically, they got participants to complete a color word Stroop test. This is a common test in cognitive psychology, where participants are shown words with different colors, but the word meaning doesn't necessarily match the color of the actual text. And they need to detect whether the word and color are congruent or not. Participants were randomly assigned to a group which wore their own clothes, and another group which wore their own clothes plus a lab coat on top. They found that the group wearing the lab coat made fewer errors when detecting mismatches in the color and the word on the Stroop test. Interestingly, in a further experiment, they told half the participants that it was a doctor's coat they were wearing, and the other half that it was a painter's apron. They then showed both groups images with four minor differences between them, and then they had to write down what the differences were as quickly as possible. They found that those who were told they were wearing a doctor's coat performed significantly better than those who were told that they were wearing the painter's apron. The authors hypothesized that it was because the task required analysis of small details in the pictures, which is a skill set more used in medicine, whereas painters tend to use a more creative process to their work. From this, the authors coined the term enclosed cognition, which refers to the concept that both physical experience of wearing certain clothes and a symbolic representation of these clothes affects the way we think, and by extension, our performance on different tasks. The study challenges the idea that the choice of clothing is just down to personal preference, or a mechanism of self-expression or social signaling, but it is actually a psychological effect that changes the way we think. A paper from 2015 then reviewed five studies which found that wearing more formal clothing enhances abstract cognitive processing. They had a bunch of psychosocial theories about why this might be, but one relating to neuroscience was that wearing formal clothing is not something most people do out of choice, so this creates a sense of novelty. This is important because novelty causes the release of a neuromodulator called dopamine in the brain, which helps with focus, but more specifically with motivation and action towards a particular goal. And you can see why this might be useful in studying for exams or working on a project. Now obviously this is only just one paper, it wasn't a systematic review so there may have been some bias when reviewing the literature, but there does seem to be an association with clothing and performance, and it would be interesting if more studies are done on this in the future. So let's make it a bit more practical. I'm not saying that you should go out there and buy fancy clothes just for studying in, that would be a bit over the top, but I think this can be used as a tool or like some sort of joker card to really increase your motivation and add that little bit extra oomph on the critical days of studying. Considering what you wear for the sake of productivity is probably most important on your pure study days, i.e. when you don't go to school, college or the office, but when you're just at home, for example on weekends. Because it's when we're at home and when we're trapped studying in our bedroom where we could potentially fall into bad habits. Rule number one is to avoid studying in your pajamas unless it's in the evening or night. This is because the brain is an association machine and just like how in the study where they wore lab coats, the brain associates what you wear with different cognitive activities. So ideally we should change out of our pajamas when studying as they are more associated with sleeping or chilling. I remember I used to get annoyed when my dad told me to shower and change before starting studying in the morning rather than diving straight in, even on the weekends. But now I do that and I follow the same routine as on school days, and I find this helps me to get into the right frame of mind when studying. And getting back to formal clothes, I save this tool for really important days of study or when I'm struggling for motivation. For example, over the summer when I was studying for my neuroscience finals, most days we had no scheduled teaching. So it was long days in the library reading and making essay plans, which could sometimes be quite a dry activity. This is why I spice it up a little bit by occasionally dressing in a white shirt 
and formal black trousers and shoes. This helped me adopt a more professional approach when studying. So even though I was not enjoying every minute of it, I was still able to get the work done because professionals don't get to choose whether they work or not. If they have to do the work, then they'll do it no matter what. I felt on the few days I did go over the top like this, like, okay, I might have got some weird looks from people in the library, but I felt less inclined to procrastinate and in general I got more done. And as an aside, formal shoes feel so nice on carpet. I have no idea why, but you should probably try it. I didn't do this every day because I didn't want this to become like the new normal. I wanted to reserve that novelty factor to help me on more challenging days of revision. An interesting case of this is the academic dress they use at Oxford University. So basically, students at Oxford, when they're sitting the exams, have to wear something called a subfusk, which I'll show on the screen. In 2015, the student union had a referendum to decide whether to abolish this dress code for exams. Surprisingly, even though students traditionally often prefer to wear casual clothes, 76% of students voted to keep the academic dress code, some people argued this was because wearing a special dress on exams may enhance performance. But there were other issues at play too, such as everyone wearing the same thing and therefore being equal. One important rule is that when you do dress up, make sure that the clothes you're wearing are still comfortable. Because this study by Bellatel shows that the perceived comfort of clothes affects test performance. What I like about this study was that it was done in naturalistic conditions, so the students got to pick their own clothes and then rate them on the basis of comfort. And they were sitting in actual exam and statistics rather than laboratory tests such as the Stroop test. So when I dressed up to study, I didn't bother doing the top button up and tie and all because I didn't want to feel too restricted. So if you do want to leverage clothing choice to your advantage, it's really important to strike the balance between comfort and also dressing in a way that makes you feel more professional. So you're able to tackle whatever work needs to be done. And yeah, do try to be practical about this. There's no need to go out and buy extra clothes. You could just wear a school uniform if you wanted to get into that zone for studying. That's all for this video. I hope you found it useful and you learned something new. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. You might also want to check out a couple of my vlogs where I discuss evidence-based tips for studying. Anyway, take care and bye for now.